What's going on everyone? Thank you for joining my channel again. Before we get started, I would like to announce that if you are from Jamestown, New York, Western New York area, and you're looking to book a photographer for your weekend events, whether it's photography for weddings, or if it's going to be a musician event, or Um, real estate photography or videography I am going to be wide open for this summer and all my weekends going forward of 2023 and forward um, I do have a few events booked already this summer so please please give me a call at the number as usual right here and take a look at my portfolio up top and make sure you subscribe down below this video to my channel to support your local artist um, after that it's an excitement news that I'm gonna be moving forward with photography and opening up my schedules with videography and photography moving forward I will be available after 4 o'clock Monday through Thursdays and Friday's gonna be roughly about 3 ish going forward into the evening and be honest with you I rather would not shoot unless if it's around sunset anyways I like to have the dramatic look of all my photos or videography, so please contact me again at my phone number, 716-6403. Auto bracketing system, okay? You can do high dynamic range photography depending on if you're looking to take separate shots, manually doing different exposures by yourself on manual mode, or just going into your camera system with the auto bracketing system, which is basically auto exposure bracketing AEB with different stops. And you can do that with three exposures, five exposures, seven exposures, it's completely up to you. Now there's different situations where I use auto bracketing. I use it when I'm hiking a mountain and I don't wanna haul my tripod in my backpack because I have a lot of other lenses and uh, uh, hiking gear with me that I don't want to carry the tripod and I just want to shoot handheld. Um, auto bracketing system comes very, very useful in the, these hiking situations. Now, if you're out on your own and you're looking to manipulate a photo on a vacation and bring your tripod by all means you can do different types of exposures where you can underexpose the sky get a lot of dramatic lighting into that sky and then you can uh, focus on the land with a high shutter speed to get a nice sharp land and then you can do a very long exposure with the water so i usually do um, a long exposure with the water get a nice low motion effect on the water do a fast exposure uh, fast exposure with the land to get it nice and sharp and clear and focused on the land and then with the sky I'll do a very very short exposure on the sky to get the dramatic color in that sky and capture all the clouds you can blend all these photos in Photoshop but for this uh, for this video in particular we're going to be talking about your AEB option and camera so let's go ahead and jump over to the camera um, for this tutorial purpose we are going to jump on my back porch and just do a couple of shots and show you what the difference is and what you can do um, right now um, I'm not going to head down to the lake and show you um, that's going to be another video but I'm going to show you what you can accomplish with your auto exposure bracketing system in camera um, the camera does stack those uh, multiple exposures together in camera but I prefer to combine them in Lightroom and we will walk through that process so let's go ahead and jump to the camera on my back porch and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about you go into your auto bracketing system I selected five shots at one exposure um, difference so we're gonna go ahead and select that and let's go ahead and move over to the electronic view finder. Now we're gonna move over, select that. And here, okay, now we're into the camera. We just selected our auto bracketing system 
at five photos with a exposure value of one stop. So now in this situation, we exposed here, but now if I want to get the foreground exposed, I have to dial down my exposure. So now I have a blown sky out. Now if you had water in the foreground you want to make it look differently and do like a long exposure and get some emotion captured then you do a long exposure too i would do three separate exposures to the point of this video we're going to go all the way up and do a f7 and then we're going to dial it down to right about there so that's at 2,000 of the second. An F71 at ISO 800. Um, actually, I'm going to dial it down to 100 because the lower the ISO, the better the clarity. I'm going to go to 80. So we're going to dial down our exposure value again. F stop 4.5. So now look at the color that's in the frame with the sky. We're going to do one shot of the sky and the next shot is going to be the buildings in the foreground sorry for the pause in video everyone every time I take a shot the Adam is ninja 5 stops recording so we're going to do a shot here on the house and we're going to come right back to it and we're at a brighter value right here and now we're at the brightest value here and we're going to combine these in Lightroom. So let's go ahead over the computer as soon as we take this shot. Everyone, I do apologize for that. Um, the, um, when I was shooting with the Atomus Ninja 5, it was cutting out with the recording every time I took a shot. It did um, not record the third shot we were going to do five photos but for the purpose of this video i'm going to show you what i'm trying to explain as far as your auto exposure bracketing system that you can select in your camera whether it's three shots five shots or seven shots i did three different exposures and as you can see i have already import them to lightroom classic um, so let's go ahead and show you what we can do as far as um combining them in Lightroom instead of doing them with blending uh, in Photoshop. It's two different uh, options. This is if you're hiking or you want to do a quick uh, high dynamic range landscape. Um, it comes in handy with real estate photography as well. Um, I only use this option if I'm hiking a very long mountain peak and I don't want to carry my tripod. I use a rock or I handheld shoot almost like if you're doing auto bracketing with a drone. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit um, function, command, depending what computer you're using, and select all three photos, five photos, seven photos, depending how many exposures you've done. Now we're going to hit function option on Mac and hit H. I'm sorry, it's function control H. Okay, and there it goes. Now, depending on how well you exposed, if you exposed each photo for each object, um, for the sky, foreground, and whatever's in the middle ground there, um, these should blend in just perfectly and auto align. Um, see, like to me, I purposely or I personally think that the sky could be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to go back and just blend in two. So I'm going to select this photo and this photo with a little more detailed sky. This photo right here is a little overblown for my taste so i think i'm just going to go with the two exposures now if i decreased my value by half a stop and went down to uh, 0 0.7 or 0 0.5 then this exposure could have been a little bit better um, it all depends on the lighting situation what time of the day you're shooting in so let's go ahead and test out just two photos i kind of play around with it a lot sometimes if you do too many shots 
and don't do the proper exposure but for like i said for the purpose of this video i'm just trying to explain to you the steps and how you accomplish a high dynamic range shot um, we can go ahead and use two see what happens with the two photos function control h and lightroom will automatically align those photos and compose them into two or take both photos and compose them and merge them so let's take a look and see what Lightroom's going to do for us. For some reason, it's not able to combine them. Let's do it again. For every reason. We'll do all three, and we'll tone them down. Function, Control H again. We'll try all three shots again. Not sure why I won't combine, maybe not enough information. So what we'll do is we'll sit here and click. I mean, you can go here to the uh, the ghost amount. Um, basically, sometimes when you overexpose and it compiles all the images, you could see a little, like uh, almost like a halo effect around certain areas where you overexpose, like right here around the edge of the building you can almost see a little bit there but we're, i'm going to click on low and see how much it gets rid of it if we go to medium brings back a little more detail and gets rid of these overexposed halos that are in your image so we're going to go ahead and merge this so now this is going to compile all three photos and merge them together to give you more detail and more of a high dynamic range better sky tones better foreground and more of the subject in the middle it takes a while to process it does automatically edit a little bit but we're going to go ahead and tone down some of the highlights maybe a couple more exposure stops okay depending on what type of camera you're using you're going to end up with a better result i'm using a nikon z7 so you can just see the difference here in the sky we have clouds um details in the cloud still we have a nice little blue effect over here we still have detail in the front for uh the foreground with my vehicle and also in the front with the bushes and the other houses now like over here we would have the sky but everything else is underexposed and not as sharp in that photo right here we have uh the middle ground um decently exposed and right here on this shot as you can see the sky is way way overblown so when you compile uh some most of the time i do five shots together um depending on the situation the lighting of the day sometimes um especially during um broad daylight when it's very bright out i'll go a half a stop okay i won't go any more than a half a stop and compile five images there's so much more sharpness in the foreground with my car there's a uh, better exposure on the bushes and the houses and the sky so now you can uh, work with this image <clears throat> sorry to develop and create a dramatic image i mean depending on what you're trying to go for you can sit here and pull up the brush now you have better leeway with editing everything so we can do a linear gradient bring it down just a smidge just to bring back some detail without affecting it and this just gives you way more um, way more options to editing. You can just bring back so much more and make more dramatic landscapes and have a better high dynamic range shot. Now look at the dramatic in the sky. That's just by toning down highlights and having a little more contrast. So we can bring up the exposure a little bit. Nope, not that far. Right there. Shadows. Now, me personally, I like to play with the curve. I like to bring that, bring down our contrast a little bit, or mid tones. Bring up a little more highlights and whites, just to get a little more detail in the sky that brings out the blue and the lighting up here behind the clouds and you can bring up a little more shadows and it just gives you so much more high dynamic range let's 
Let's do a little more exposure. Tone down the highlights. Shadows down. And like I said, I only use this option only if I am hiking and I don't want to carry my tripod. You can just get way more out of it and you can get more detail and more high more high dynamic or hdr range on your camera and your photo so if you're looking to do some high dynamic range shots you can def definitely accomplish it with aeb option now i'm going to sharpen this up a little bit get rid of the result or uh, noise a little noise reduction and here now you got You've uh, maintained proper exposure in the sky, in the foreground where my car is. It's a lot more sharper. And you still have proper exposure here in the middle with all these houses. As opposed to taking one photo, whether you're on manual and or on um, automatic, you're still losing detail in the sky. Now right here, the foreground is perfectly exposed, but you lost all the sky. I mean, you can, depending on what type of camera you have, if you have a good enough high dynamic range, which my camera is very expensive and it has that range, but it's not as much color that I toned down all these highlights and it's still not as good as when I did three shots together and toned down the highlights, which I, you can see the difference here. Now I have more detail in the clouds and more color in the clouds. See the difference? way way better way better you have so much more room to editing on a high dynamic range with pile, uh, compiled images on auto exposure bracketing so there it is guys um i hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe to my video please and join my channel support your local artists and i hope to hear from you guys soon sorry for the long video i feel i have drag this on a little bit today but i do appreciate you sticking around and you have a great weekend and this is the way that you auto bracket with your camera to create hdr high dynamic range photos so there you have everyone that's how you do your auto exposure bracketing with your camera to create high dynamic range photography so if you like this video, stay tuned for more photography tips for beginners. Make sure you subscribe to my channel down below and support your local artist. Contact me once again at phone number next to me or check out my portfolio up top. And I'm looking forward to building my videography and photography in the future with time opening up on the weekends and book me for your future events, weddings, and gigs coming up in 2023. Have a good day, stay safe.